Hey booze! In this video, I give commentary based on my opinion. Nothing is to be taken as factual. We are just here to have conversation. We don't expose and we don't sip tea on this channel. I'm giving you real talk straight, no chaser. Let's see if you can handle it. Cause I'm a boss. I didn't think for you to be proud of her. Of course you have. You are marrying a man who can support you. Yeah, yeah if Russell ain't had that bread, she ain't going to be with him. <laughs> Russell Square. Yeah, Russell Russ Square. Russell Square. Thing, Sierra, Sierra had a she she has a good situation, but she was you don't a, leave future they, she and a, get with Russell Wilson. The, the, the thing is, I think though, that's what you don't wrong, leave though. future and get with Russell Women Wilson. Like, it's, a, it's a type. Listen, Women bro, everybody got a type. Yeah, that's true. Everybody has a type. You gonna leave future and get with Russell Wilson? Is, though, when you so damn square, and I love him on the field. He's a square. Channing. He's a king square. Channing, you go from this level of toxicity, you just want something stable. Russell Wilson, do a woman who used to talk the future really want to Russell Wilson? <laughs> what? Obviously, yeah. That's a good question. Like, I don't believe it. I think Why? it's financial stability. I don't think that oh, wow. after you, after wait a minute, you, after wait you a like minute. the dude who cool, Again. Homeboy, homeboy just, he's super, like, no hate. I bought his shoes the other day with a sugar daddy slim outfit. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I, I have no personal issue with him, like, or her, you know, I mean, God bless him. He, he just a corny dude, like, wow. ain't nothing wrong with it, he just so, like, he, nah, I ain't gonna say corny, because that's hating. He's just like a square, like, he, but I But he's straight laced. Clean cut Clean guy, yeah, never done like, wrong, follow I don't, the rules. I don't believe that a girl who come with, from a street dude could even adapt to so, it. And it's so you saying she a gold digger? I'm, I, I ain't gonna say she a gold digger because she got her own, but at the end of the day, I don't believe it's real. Hi guys, it's Yanni and I'm back with another video. So I wanted to come on here and give my thoughts regarding the Tashina Arnold situation. And I also wanted to give my thoughts on Russell Wilson being labeled a square by the majority and collective of black men. And the reason why I wanted to tie this all into one video is simply because it highlights how we as black women have this idea of what the black male image should look like and what it should be but then black men have a totally different understanding and perspective of what the black male image should be and what it looks like and so what we're seeing is a black woman here asking this question of what can we as black women in America do to stop aiding in the emasculation of black men in America? Now, I know black Twitter was going in on her. I know a lot of y'all was. But all I'm going to say is this. The simple answer is simply this. It's not our place as black women to somehow fix the black male image in America. It's not our problem, it's not our issue. And the reason is because we're not men. We're not men. We don't know what it's like to be a man. We don't know what it's like to be a black man in America. We don't have that experience. We have the experience of a black woman in America. And so we can only represent and speak for ourselves. It's not up to us as black women to come in and save the day and fix the black male image, especially when black men are the root cause of their own negative image within America. It's just, it is what it is. There's nothing that we can do. It is up to them to take control of their image and fix the damage that has been created by so many men that are out here damaging the black male image. My next point that I want to make is that I think collectively we as black women are waking up to the fact that the more we try to protect the black male image, the more we try to fix the black male image, the more we try to chime in or step in to save the day when it comes to black men within our community, the more we realize how it's actually our biggest downfall. And so we see things like intimate partners between a black man and a black woman. And 
you know, we have situations now where it's like at least four black women and girls were murdered per day in the U.S. last year. As homicides surged across the U.S. last year, the number of black females killed increased sharply as well. Also, we have situations like companies still aren't hiring black men despite 10.6 million open jobs in the U.S. It's costing the economy 50 billion, which we all know what that means. A lot of these men don't qualify for the jobs. You know, they're not going to school. They're not getting educated. They're the least educated group within America. And then also black pregnant women are being killed at a higher rate. And so homicides are now the leading cause of death during pregnancy. These women are more likely to be killed. And so I'm saying all of this to say it's not our place. We really need to start focusing on ourselves and doing what is best for ourselves. People are going to have an issue with that. And there's nothing that you can do about it. You know, when it comes to this conversation about black women focusing on ourselves, that includes everybody, your mother, your father, your siblings, the toxic friend that keeps calling you, that won't leave you alone. She drains your energy. It's everyone. It's not just black men. We as black women truly need to work on ourselves focus on ourselves because we have our own problems. We have our own issues. And so when it comes to the older generation of black women, I've been saying this on my platform and I will say it again. A lot of them are out of touch. They really think that it's our job to fix what black men are doing or to fix the issues that black men face. And it's really not our place. It's just not. And it goes back to when I was saying that you really have to be careful about taking advice from the older generation of black women because they have been conditioned, socially programmed to always put the black man first in everything and to continuously put themselves last to be the sacrificial lamb of the community. And it hasn't gotten them anywhere. Tina's words resonated with many fans and they praised her for speaking up about such an important issue. But see, these fans are in the minority. The majority of those who watch Tina's docuseries and her interview on CBS are actually saying she's the one perpetuating dangerous stereotypes. See, a lot of black women have correctly pointed out how this documentary is completely tone deaf and insensitive to the plight of black women. According to statistics released by the FBI in September 2021, at least four black women and girls were murdered per day in the United States in 2020. The data from the U.S. Department of Justice shows that even before the COVID-19 pandemic, black women were two and a half times more likely to experience domestic violence than white women. And during the pandemic, the incidence of violence against black women rose dramatically. On top of that, black women are also less likely to report their partners for domestic violence because of their general distrust in the system and the fear that they might not be believed. And this is why fans are now calling out Tina Knowles for using her star power to portray black men as the victims instead of focusing on the crimes perpetrated by black men against black women. There are a lot of insightful comments on social media about Tina's new documentary, and here are just some of them. The energy the black community puts into coddling the men more than even the women and children has always amazed me, one fan said. Look how protected black males are, the most protected class, next to white women. I am so proud of the black women in these comments standing up for the truth, another person wrote. Tina is willfully tone deaf and insensitive towards black women to make this nonsense with the rate of black femicide going up every single day at the hands of black men. She knows good and well she's smearing over the facts with these lies and trying to silence black women at a time when we need to be heard the most. The Knowles family does not stand for black women or our safety, and she made it clear with this movie. And another fan added, Aw, how sweet of Tina. Hey, I have an idea. She should do one about black femicide. Let's not forget to highlight how the majority of black women's killers are black men. If you didn't know this, that's not a surprise. The media favors the victimization of black men. I'm loving these comments, man. Proud of y'all, black women. Many fans have also pointed out how it's hypocritical of Tina to use Jay-Z as an example of a stereotype black man when he himself contributed to perpetuating those same stereotypes through his music. So my next point is this. I also wanted to say that we have a group of men that are in 100% control over what they label cool, what they label to be the thing to do. 
And it's interesting because we as black women, we have this idea that cool is being educated, cool is taking care of your family, cool is being the family man, cool is being the provider. These men don't see it that way. And so for that reason alone, it does not make sense for us to see how we can stop the emasculation of the black man when we understand what healthy masculinity is. Masculinity can be very healthy, but when we see healthy masculinity, when black men see healthy masculinity, it's labeled corny. And so the type of masculinity that is praised, that is labeled cool is the toxic masculinity. And so for that very reason, I don't feel like it's our place to go in and see how we can correct or how we can help. It's really up to men. And it's gonna start with them going to therapy. It's gonna start with them taking on a healing journey. And that's something that they actively have to do. And it's something that they have to choose for themselves. It's not something that we can force them to do. And so it doesn't make sense for us to be all up in their business business when it's for them to take care of. It's their business to take care of. It's not our business at all whatsoever. And the victim mentality for a lot of these men is that they want to use us as a crutch as to why they're being emasculated in media. And it's laughable to me because we're talking about a group of men, not a group of boys, but a group of men. And we look to men to be assertive in a way to where they find a solution to their problems. They find a solution to our problems. They find a solution to improve the community. And if they're looking to us or they're using us as a crutch as to why they can't move forward or why they can't somehow be successful when it comes to certain things, it really showcases how they are coddled. They really lean on us for everything. They lean on us as a crutch when it comes to their victim mentality. I mean, it's always the black woman, the black woman, the black woman, the black woman. We are the problem. And so for that reason, we really should stay clear away from their image and separate ourselves completely and continue to focus on ourselves, which it has already happened because we have created movements and programs like Black Girl Rock, Black Girl Magic, and things like that to help improve our image in media because we do have a negative side to our image. We have baby mama culture. We have these female rap artists and things like that that are hypersexual. And so we have other programs that balance it out so that we're not constantly seen in one light. And it's interesting, you would think that black men would step up and start creating some type of positive programs for young black boys, but they have decided not to do that. That again, it's not our issue, that's not our problem, that's something that they need to step up and do or step up and create. So it's not really up to us. Squares don't get super attractive women in a prime. They don't. Mm -hmm. The woman got to fall off a cliff first in, in one way or another. She didn't had a kid by or two or three kids. She didn't gain weight. She didn't did this. Then she is pushed to the square because you're not at the top of that totem pole no more. So all those toxic dudes that you like, they looking past your ass. You got too much baggage now. So now it's like, okay, I'll go back in my deck and give the square a chance that I look past over 10 times before to be with this no nothing that I got a kid with that he don't take care of or pay child support for. That's how it happens. But in terms of a square being an attractive woman in her prime's first choice, he got to be filthy rich or he don't have a chance. That's just honest. That's just I honest. Like, I agree. Mm -hmm. uh, nah. Shoot my niggas in Yeah, I'll give I, I, you that. Also, I want to add that when we listen to these men that are on these podcasts, they never really consider how Sierra may have felt emotionally and mentally with Future. They simply focus on how cool Future comes across as, as a person, as a man. But they never consider how the woman may have been feeling while she was with him. And so when you look at Sierra, you see a woman that has really changed. You can see how she has a very good emotional relationship with Russell Wilson versus with future it may have been more physical it may have been more surface level 
And that is what men are missing when it comes to their commentary, when it comes to Sierra and Russell Wilson versus Future, is that she has an emotional, mental connection with Russell Wilson. And I think it may have been more physical, more surface level with Future. And I think when you mature over time as a woman, you start to see how those old things pertaining to a man that you felt were so necessary no longer become necessary because you understand that your needs change and the things that you want as a woman you don't really care for when you're a girl you know like you don't really care for those same things anymore because you're growing into a woman you're growing into this beautiful mature woman and you're getting rid of that little girl mentality you're healing the little girl inside of you and so you really don't have the same outlook on life you don't have the same mindset like those old beliefs are dying within you and so you're really growing and blossoming into a young woman a woman that understands what she needs what she wants and what she's looking for in a partner and that's what these men don't understand so on that note that's all that I have regarding this video. Leave this up to black men. Let them correct their image within media. If they feel like they're being emasculated, then they should do something about it instead of complaining and saying, oh, the white man is holding me back. It's just a victimhood mentality that I can't get with when it comes to black men because the more they say the white man is holding me back, the more he will. So on that note, that's all that I have regarding this video. I would love your thoughts and opinions, so please comment them down below. And if you are new here, please subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you are notified for when I upload. This is Real Talk with Yanni, where we keep it real so we can heal. And I will see you guys in my next video.